Hello, I'm Jack, and welcome to Oxford Online English. In this lesson, you can learn how to improve your score in parts 1 and 2 of the CIE speaking exam. In parts 1 and 2, there are some specific things that you can do that will help you to perform well. As you may know, part 1 involves a 2 minute conversation during which candidates take turns answering questions. The examiner will ask you to speak about everyday topics and the questions will be quite simple. So the first tip is to always develop your answer. You don't have a lot of time, so it's important to use your time to demonstrate your English skills. So how should you do this? Give long, full answers. Simple yes or no answers are certainly not enough. Instead, add reasons, details and examples to everything that you say. Now, let's look at an example of this with a sample question. Imagine you're asked this question. What keeps you motivated to learn English? What would you say? Here's a sample answer. I enjoy learning English because I can speak with my foreign friends. Now, this answer's fine, but it could be better if we add more reasons, examples, and details. Take a look at this. I enjoy learning English because I can speak with foreign friends. For example, one of my acquaintances here is Polish, and English is a mutual language we can both understand. I also work in a multinational company, and I need to speak English a lot. You can see that the speaker has developed the point by adding a personal story. This also allows you to use some more impressive vocabulary, such as acquaintances and multinational. Of course it's important not to just keep speaking and speaking. Your answer needs to have a clear end. But in the exam, you will be given some time. So develop your ideas and make sure you take advantage of your speaking time to say as much as you can. Tip number two, learn keywords related to everyday topics. In part one, the questions are about very general topics, just like when you first meet someone. This can make it easier to prepare for part one, and here's how. It means it's possible for us to make some predictions about what you'll be asked. Common part one topics include where you live, leisure time, work, study, future plans, and holiday experiences. Now, it's probably not a good idea to prepare complete phrases because the examiners are trained to look for this. But it is, however, useful to learn a few advanced level keywords around each topic. This way, you'll have a rich vocabulary prepared that you can use naturally. So let's look at an example using the topic leisure time. Imagine you were asked the question, what do you do at the weekend? What would you say? If you're interested in surfing, your answer might be something like this. I usually go surfing. This answer's okay, but it doesn't really demonstrate a lot of advanced English. Now, before the exam, if you do a bit of research, you might then be able to say that you're quite fanatical about surfing, or that it's something that helps you to unwind, or it's an activity in which you can get out and about. Perhaps you're afraid of shark attacks. With a bit of preparation, you'll be in a better place to give a stronger answer. I usually go surfing. This is something I'm really fanatical about. It lets me exercise, unwind, and get out and about. I prefer to surf in isolated locations, though I'm a little afraid of shark attacks these days. Aim to learn five or six new words for each of the most common topic areas in part one. You probably won't use all of them, but you might use one or two. Now even using one or two high level words and phrases can make a difference to your vocabulary score. Now we'll look at part two of the CAE speaking exam. What happens in this part? The goal in this section is to compare two pictures and to speculate about the people in them. You have a minute to answer and you speak only to the examiner. So what are the examiners looking for here? The examiners want to see that you can put your thoughts into a well-organised one-minute answer. 
So, my first tip for part two is learn how to compare and speculate. Now this is a key part of this task and you can and should prepare for it. One aspect of this is using linking words to connect your ideas and sentences. Let's look at how we can do this using these pictures of people reading as an example. The question might be, compare why these people are reading and say how they might be feeling. Let's look at comparing first. For things that are similar, use language like both, each, similarly, or likewise, or even in the same way. We can also see that. For example, this man may be reading for pleasure and we can also see that she appears to be enjoying herself, or similarly, she appears to be enjoying herself. In the same way, she appears to be enjoying herself. Now for things that are different, use meanwhile, whereas, or even by contrast. On the other hand, for example, the man is reading alone. By contrast, this woman seems to be reading to some children. On the other hand, the woman seems to be reading to some children. Or, meanwhile, the woman seems to be reading to some children. Now, in addition to comparing and contrasting, you need to know how to speculate. You shouldn't just say what you see. You also need to talk about the ideas and possibilities that the picture represents. Some useful structures include might, perhaps, maybe, it seems like. For example, it seems like he's reading something very serious and important. Perhaps she is reading the children a fairy story. You can also use if sentences to speculate what you would do or how you would feel if you were in the situation. If I were her, I'd be very happy. If that were me, I'd fall asleep. So it's essential that you study this kind of language and use it when you practice. My next tip for part two of the CAE speaking exam is don't waste time. Firstly, choose your pictures as soon as you can. The best way to do this is to choose two pictures that seem very different. You should also begin comparing immediately. Don't waste time telling the examiner which pictures you want to talk about. Next, don't paraphrase or repeat the question. This is one certain way to waste time. And finally, Speak for the whole minute. This leads us to our next point. Have a plan in case you don't know what to say. Some students find it helpful to develop a few automatic backup ideas for comparison in case they run out of things to talk about. These are simple ideas that you can use for any picture. This way, if you get stuck and you can't think of anything else to say, you can use these so that you don't just stop talking. These ideas might be about what the people are wearing, or how old they are, or even how many people there are. The people in this picture are all wearing the same clothes. Likewise, these people seem to be all dressed in white. Better still, ask yourself what the people might be thinking, feeling, or doing. These kinds of comparisons are always useful as they allow for a lot of speculation. This image shows people singing, whereas these people appear to be doing some kind of martial art. The main point is that you have some questions you can ask yourself in any situation. What ideas can you think of? Tip number six, don't spend all the time describing. This is probably the most important tip because it's the biggest mistake that candidates make. You don't need to say what you see and you don't need to describe the pictures at all. Your job is to make comparisons and speculate about the pictures, not to say what the pictures show. If you spend too much time describing, you're not giving yourself the opportunity 
to demonstrate your abilities to compare and speculate in a longer answer. Okay, so how can you practice and prepare for part two of the CAE speaking test? The best thing that you can do is to practice with as many different images as possible. It's always better doing this with a friend or a teacher, but you can also do this alone with a timer. You can even make your own combinations of sample images simply by doing a Google search and picking two random images. You could search for people on holiday or people eating or groups of people. Then imagine a question remembering that the typical question format contains two parts. One, compare the two situations and two, speculate on how the people may be feeling or the reasons for their behaviour. So we might get something like this. Compare how these people are enjoying their holidays and say how they might be feeling. Now I'm going to give you an example answer and I want you to try and think of how I could improve this. These people are enjoying their holidays with their family. They are sitting outside with their dogs there are two adults and they're, they're happy. Uh, these people are about to get on a plane, they're, they're in a desert. Now, let's stop right there. What's wrong with this answer and how could it be improved? Can you tell me? Firstly, I'm simply describing the pictures, but we talked about how important it is to compare and contrast. Secondly, I'm not using any language or linking words to do this. What else am I doing wrong? I'm also not speculating. Again, I'm simply describing what I'm looking at. In addition, I'm going way too slow. Let's start again. This image seems to show a family spending the holiday together. In the same way, this might be a couple. However, it doesn't look like they have their children with them. In this picture, the family seems to be at home or at a holiday house, whereas in this picture, these people appear to be at some kind of exotic destination, far away from civilization. Uh, there are animals in this photo, whereas there are only people in this one. Both scenes uh, show people having a holiday outdoors. I suppose the key difference is that the people in this image appear to be having a real adventure and are free, whereas the people here are spending time with family. If it were me, I'd prefer to be going on this kind of holiday, flying around in a plane in a new and wild place. As you can see, I've focused on comparing and contrasting as much as possible, using a variety of language structures. I've also continued to speculate all the way through. I've used both simple comparisons, like whether there are animals in the photo, as well as more complex ones, speculating that one is a family holiday, whereas the other is an adventure. After this, the big challenge is practicing to do all this in the time limits. That's the end of the lesson. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found it useful. You can see more of our free lessons on our website, oxfordonlineenglish.com. In the video description, you can also see a link to the full version of this lesson. The full lesson includes the text and exercises to help you practice what you've learned in this class. See you next time.